Yeah, I know. I know. They're like, I'm looking at them like, what's up with the tables? The chairs are the same, right? But the tables, they're not the same. Right. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah.
did it go? Did you get anything done? You sit there like, there's a brick wall there. How nice. You know, if anybody ever wants to like pound your head against the brick wall at 20 minutes, out. But if you want to, it's there. I got some stuff done. I was just this. Yeah. So, um, here we are in the. Oh, I forgot to explain like the play to you. So this is a play, for those of you who don't know. And we did the action part together, which we, that's what we wrote together, and then now we're going to do the dialogue part. So anybody who has a question about your work and your creative process, you can ask me or on Twitter. Folks, you can tweet in. Um, Crystal's out there in New Jersey. Sometimes she tweets in. If, you're, if you don't feel like tweeting in today, they're saying hi. And all the other folks who tweet in, they're saying hi. Um, anybody else? Who cares? Yeah. You started writing regularly again, yeah? Right. You want to get back into a place you started some time ago. Right. So how do you how does one do that? Gentleman who was had a deadline last week. Yeah. Everett. Everett. Yes. Right. But I don't feel that. Oh, okay. Because you were asking him what makes it difficult to go back. You were asking him yes, that. Yeah. Him. And he said he had some keys and it was felt like he had a lock and many keys and he just kept trying keys and none of them were affected. Right. So so how's it going? Working on your your new old play. Some people go, I can't go, it's hard to go back to an old work. And some people go, oh, it's great. You're having a great experience, which is, I'm so glad. Right, right. So you're putting in the time, yes. regular time again. How does that feel? You're getting back to writing regularly. It feels like it's Yeah. It just feels like it's Yeah. yeah. Remind me of your name. James. 
Japanese woman, the magical something yeah, of tidying up. Yeah, the decluttering, decluttering book. book. Yeah, I read that. You read that. <laughs> so, so she says that you know you pick something up and if it gives you a good feeling, that means it, hey, it gives you a hey. Right. Mm. Right. That didn't work for you. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. He wasn't in the talk. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. I got to, I mean, I, I read it, but I, I, I became a non believer when she started talking about how to hang the clothes so that they descend. And I thought, I don't have that kind of closet. So there's an assumption that we have things like dressers and closets that I don't have. So I thought, hmm, I wish you'd take into account that some people don't have that kind of real estate footprint that we can organize our, you know. So let's go back to, I can't remember the woman, the fabulous woman's name who wrote the book. Do I save a rejection slip? So you pick up a rejection slip. It makes you feel what? Good, bad? It, it, I, it makes me feel like the work, the work of getting all the rejection slips to get to these steps. Really? Yeah. Really? Does that make you feel bad? Oh, good, keep them. I mean, it makes you feel good, keep them. I mean, for me, I just... Um, I know, I'm not, I'm, yeah, I'm not, I'm not interested in holding on to things just so I can say, ha-ha, look, you said I wasn't, like Casey Affleck apparently, he got that award recently, and he read, you know, he read all the bad press he got, you know, you know in his award acceptance speech, ha-ha, you see, this guy said such and such about me, and this one said, and that's a, that's a way, it's not, you know, I, I spend the time saying thank you to the people who cheered me on. Instead of ha ha to the people who didn't. It's more like that when you see the rejection is going to progress from something that's uh, just anonymous to, to rejection slips that give you good criticism of what you work on. Yeah, then keep them. If you don't want to throw them away, don't. boxes upstate where it's cheap and say for the next 80 years I'm going to be paying on the storage unit. You know, you could take a rent a house upstate for a week and have a big bonfire and burn everything in the backyard. You see? And have a big party and just burn all your pages. All the artists, pay all, the, all your spray pages. What about painting? Painting? Like a Picasso, a Rembrandt? I mean, I keep that, I'd say. Painting, I don't know about paintings. So paintings, I, I, don't, I don't have any paintings. Oh, I have paintings of germ. But this is what I do with germ stuff. Sweet little germ, five years old, my son, okay? He brings, look, mommy, look what I did in school today, every day. There's a pile of stuff, right? Buy their, so do we send germ to school, we walk him to school, he goes in the building, I go home, I take, 
why? Because I keep like, you know, the hits. That one and that one. Look, there you learn to make the letter M. Okay, yeah. But we throw this stuff away. We keep the hits and let the rest go. He's not going to need to dig through boxes in a storage room full of papers where he learned to, when he was working on the letter Q. Poor thing. He'll be like, gee, why do my parents have some backbone? You know? So we're throwing stuff away. Yeah, see? There you go. For film, my inclination is to write what I know, at least I write what I know, but I'm feeling like that's kind of limiting and maybe like my imagination is stunted. Do you think, do you generally start from writing, you know, just from experience, like letting that be the seed or more um, right. imagined? Right. That's a great question. What's your name? Stephanie. Good Stephanie. Stephanie. Oh, then you've been here. Huh? I haven't. I've seen your work, but I've never been oh. to this. <laughs> Good to see you. Thanks for coming. Uh, that's a great question, Stephanie. To, or should we write from what we know? From what we know, should we use that, or should we let our imagination take us places? And this is the thing about that note, which is a good note. Write what you know, but it's also, like you said, it runs you into all sorts of weird places. Like you're just writing what? Uh, yeah, I go to work. I, I'm a barista. I go to work. I go home. I go to work. <laughs> really great, but you know. Um, it also leads people to think that they have to have adventures in order to write. So we get a lot of um, people who have maybe spent a summer abroad. You know, so you get a lot of like plays about that. Or people who go and do relief work in the Congo. We get a lot of plays about that. Because I was there. And I did relief work in the Congo. It's like, great, great. So you're write a play about doing relief for the combo. Okay. You know, so there's a there's a limit to that too. Okay? So because people think they have to do something exciting in order to write something exciting. Um I don't think that's true. The question is write what you you know. So there write what you know. So there are four words in that sentence, right? Write, we know what that is. What? What? Well, we're going to find out. You? Who are you? That's the part that I like to think about. Who am I? Who am I, really? You know what I mean? Am I just the sum of my resume and blah, 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 yeah, where I was born and where I grew up and all that? Or am I more than that? And that's where it gets interesting, right? What you know. Who are you? And how do you define yourself? And are you Stephanie, the person who grew up where you grew up in? Or are you some, are you more than that? And that's where I think you're feeling the call of your imagination. Answer it. See what happens. The worst thing that can happen is people go, you don't know anything about, you know, blah, 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 blah. The, the Civil War. You weren't there. 
oh great, so we can't write about the Civil War. Okay, you know, then we get into that, right? No, I wasn't in the Civil War, no, I wasn't, right? So, okay, oh, um, think, about, think about the great, right, think about, I don't know, what's his name? Well, think about Shakespeare, we're in the public theater. Think about Shakespeare, he wasn't, I mean, he might have been in real life Hamlet, right? But he wasn't Hamlet and King Lear and the Scottish King and Richard II and III and Henry IV and VI and V and VIII. He wasn't all those guys, yo, right? He was writing about what he knew, but he saw himself in a larger context, the big S of self. And I, I think, I mean, I don't know, I don't know because I wasn't there, but I imagine which bridges the gap between me and the world. I imagine what he might have been feeling to write those all those characters. Because he certainly didn't live all those lives. I mean, he lived his life, right? Okay, so you just have to maybe do a little more research or be a little more aware and awake, right? You have to allow yourself to discover things and allow yourself to go, gee, I, that's something I, I don't know about, so maybe I need to read a book on it or an article or talk to somebody who had first-hand experience. Take a, and you have to take risks. You have to go out on limbs, you know, of trees that you don't know the names of, right, and dare to sort of, you know, I've never seen uh, trees. Have you ever watched squirrels in trees? I mean, squirrels get a bad, you know, squirrels. What are squirrels? They beg in the park for nuts, right? I mean, what is that? Not so great. But if you watch them in trees, have you ever seen them? They go, they jump, they jump. The trees are like really high. They're like jumping from one tree. To, these aren't flying squirrels. These are regular squirrels. They leap from one tree to another. I'm amazed. I'm like, wow, they're so brave. You know, so we have to be at least that brave as a squirrel, brave as a squirrel, okay? So that's all we have to do. Thank you. So far, what you're actually saying is write what you know plus imagination. It's only you have your a very exciting life, but it's the intersection, it's the crossroads between you and you. It's a, it's a poem, it's a, you know, it's funny, the crossroads or Jesus on the cross, which is kind of the same thing, you know, or you're, you know, it's the same idea. It's somebody at the crossroads, or you do math, baby math, with the X and Y axis, you know what I mean, the crossroads. It's the crossroad between who you are in this body, in this flesh, and who you are across time, and how we relate to each other, and how you know, you feel for somebody. You might have to have more empathy if you write from your imagination. You might have to be more awake. You will probably be, you know, who knows, a better writer, potentially. I mean, Shakespeare was writing out of imagination, and, and, and research, and, you know, he read widely, and all that kind of stuff, but, Exactly, but that's the cro it's a crossroads. It's, so it's, it's you and your imagination. And that's the, the big S of your big self. You know? Which Shakespeare also begins with S. Big S. And so does Stephanie. <laughs> so there you are. Okay, yeah. yeah. So you're working hard on a project, and then maybe you run into a roadblock, like a, like it's a flooded river. I mean, just imagine if it were a landscape. It's like a river, or it's a cliff, and there's like no bridge, right? Or it's like a big rock, huge, or it's a wall, 
and you're a mime. Yeah, it's a wall, right? And you're like, oh my God, it's a wall that can't get out. I don't know how to get around, right? That prevented you from finishing the project? I'd say no. No, because that obstacle is basically just your soul saying, okay, what you got? Come on. You know what I'm saying? It's just like what you got. You're 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 a warrior in a in a in a magical kingdom. You know, you're supposed to like, you know, it's just like all the great movies or, or video games, if you like those videos. You know? Sure, you come to an impasse and the river's flooded. What would the hero do? It's your story. You know, you're the hero in the story. You're the writer hero. What would the hero do? Ah, oh, darn! I better go home. Yeah, right? You don't wanna you're not that, right? No, or there's a wall you can't seem to... Go ahead. No, I was actually asking more about right. you than it. I mean, I right. certainly face challenges in right. work, but I was just wondering if, if that oh, happens with, right. like, with success, do, do right. those types of like challenges or walls get bigger? Like, oh, yes, they do. They get bigger. Like, they get bigger. They, the, the challenges get bigger, the obstacles get larger, the air gets rarer, you have fewer colleagues that you can turn to. You have fewer people who can give you good notes. You know what I'm saying? Well, sure. So that's all that, you know, there you are. You're like, I mean, I've never climbed Mount Everest before. Has anybody climbed Mount Everest? No, I have I mean, I've so you know. You're climbing Mount Everest and there's not a lot of oxygen and it's cold. And, you know, you might have a colleague up ahead, but you can't see them because it's snowy, you know what I mean? There's someone behind you, but they're kind of like, you know, eh, not really, can't really count on them, and there you are just walking. I have no idea how to do it, but <laughs> you know, you do this, you know? Oh, sure, it gets a lot harder. It gets a lot harder. People think, oh, once you have some success, then things get easier. No, no, things get harder. Things actually get more difficult. It gets steeper, and more people want more things from you, and, and that's just work. And then maybe you have a kid, or a spouse, or a mom or dad that needs your help, or a dear friend who, who is counted on you for help, you know? And then you have things like your reputation. So I do all kinds of fun things. I like, I have a band now. We play for free at Signature Theater every Saturday. Yeah, because it's like, let's do something new. Let's do something that, yeah, let's do something like kind of, not brand new, I've been playing music for a long time. But let's do something new, and it's kind of interesting to do something really, really well, and do something not as well as I do the other thing, and to do them both at the same time. They're like, yeah. So you, you have to find ways to play the game, or you, you know, the game starts playing you. So you just have to, you know, Anyway, but, sure, but when that river, so next time the river, you know, ah, yeah, swim, swim, sure, or, or, look, there's a horse, ride the horse across, I mean, it's so, it's fun when you start playing it like a, like a game, it, it becomes enjoyable, and that's what I try to encourage people to do, make the process enjoyable, play the game of the process with yourself. Because that's what, why we're in the field of creativity. To hone those skills and to make it enjoyable. That's why we're here. And then you take those skills and you, you apply them to everyday life. And then things start getting really exciting. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. uh, I'm writing a play, I guess it, in my head, it takes place in 1996. I don't know why really. But I have, but I have the characters talking, but I, don't, I haven't like, done the research. Right. Like to like make it in that period. Right. At what point do you, can I write the whole play without having done that research and then go back and right. figure out if that's the time right. period? Or do you think it's important to do that research and figure it out? Uh, I would, but, do you know why not, does something it's, happen? Is yeah, something it's, like, so it's kind of based, I wanted to write a play about a delicatessen. Okay. That, uh, and I was doing research on the Second Avenue Deli that was uh -huh. killed in 1996. Okay, okay. And I became interested in exploring like, okay. a whole of, like a family after Right. Uh, the oh, cool. is a Holocaust survivor killed. Right. And, uh, and it, that was happened in 96. So I guess that's in my head, but I guess it kind of doesn't matter. 
I, since, it's, since that's the specific historical reference that you're working with, I would say write the play and then do the research. Because okay. that story could happen in 2017. Yeah. You know? So I would say write the play and then take a look at 1996 to see if it's really, and it might not be. There might be some things you might want to plant in there, you know? Um, but yeah, I would definitely, in, in your case, write, write, go ahead and write the play and see what you got, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah, and usually, usually it's like, do, you know, do a little research, do a lot of writing, and then do the research to, you need to fill in the, you know, because a lot of people get all wrapped up in research, and then we don't get to do our writing, you know. Is this a USDA inspector on your list? Okay. <laughs> Wow. Well, at least they let you back in. <laughs> Be careful. No. Oh, we got, we got, we got five minutes left. Anybody? Uh, strange. <laughs> but um, in writing a short film, are there ideas that are inherently, you think, bigger and just the nature of them is that you want to explore them for a longer film or really it's arbitrary and you can, you know, write a 10 minute film about something as well as a longer film about the same thing. I, I, think, I think it's how much you want to show, you know? I mean, you know, uh, whatever, a love story, you know, you know, boy meets girl, they fall in love, get married, have 27 children. You could do that in 15 minutes. You know, if you wanted to, if you wanted to show it that way, or it could be a 25-hour film. It's how much how much detail you want to show, right? So that's that's the that's the thing about length. Um, some things should only be a certain length. Some people think I have to make a full-length play or film or something, so they stretch it out, padding it with details that aren't necessary. So you want every single detail that you show to be necessary. And length is a is a choice that you make, you know. Yeah. Um, like you could do, I don't know, the, the Civil War, or whatever, and you could do it in seven minutes if you wanted. It's one thing that you want to show in a certain way, right? Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah. It's Valentine's Day tomorrow. Anybody? Nervous? <laughs> no? Oh, yeah. Shit. <laughs> I heard that Tinder is like the most you downloaded lifestyle app ever. Like, or for the last like three years, it's Tinder. Everybody's like, like, <laughs> madly trying to find. Well, I thought you meant on Valentine's Day. I well, like, well, everyone on Valentine's Day. Well, I think there's a, there's a, there's a wave of desperation. Uh, <laughs> Well, we won't talk about 45th, but hey, he's there's, still. There's a wonderful movie I saw recently, and I think it's on Netflix. It's called Genius. Uh -huh. And the reason I, I mention it is because it's a wonderful lesson in rewriting. Uh -huh. uh, it's a movie about Thomas Wolfe and his editor. Oh, uh -huh. And yeah. it's, it's, it's remarkable when you were saying, tell the story, how much you want to tell, you know, this little bit or mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. and, and it was so uh, instructive in the way, you know, how Thomas Wolfe right, brought his right. writing and how the editors, you know, why are you doing, why are you saying, right. you know, you're 10 minutes on her eyelash. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It, it was very instructive, uh -huh. and I, I found it a really good movie. It's on Netflix? Yeah. It's about Thomas Wolfe? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. It's called Genius. Yeah. Oh, does that refer to his editor? I, I think it, it referred to them, the, the oh, team of them. Oh, they're together. Oh, yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, it yeah. certainly referred to him as the writer. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have one more? Yeah. Before we go, yeah. So you mentioned the 45th. So in this time, like, as a writer, like, responding to this, uh, do you think there's nothing to take in our work, or? Uh, do you think there's what to take? Like, 
like, like what I, uh, I guess I'm struggling, like, uh, I don't really know how to respond to my work to what's happening politically. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And where uh, it should be taking us, or if we should just, we should have to or really I think the most important thing is to do your work and not to get uh, obsessed about reading about him or, you know, every little thing that's going on. You know, do your work, and, and if you feel like you've got to go and protest or resist or do something, go and do that. You make sure you get your work done, too. You can get your work done and be politically involved, you know? And if you, you find that you, there are things that are going on in the world today that you want to talk about in your work, go for it, you know? Go for it. Definitely go for it, if you feel that. Yeah, it's a good thing. Are we done? Are we, are we? Boom. Thanks for coming, you guys. Thanks for coming. We'll be here. We won't be here next week because it's because it's it's it's, uh, it's President's Day next week. And uh, next yeah, next week is President's Day, so we won't be here. Um, but we'll be back on the 27th, correct, Maya? Okay. Thanks. Thanks for coming. Bye.